In this video, I'll show you how to calculate customer retention rate and churn rate for e-commerce. I'm going to use this easy to use Google Sheets template. You can just paste your data and it will show multiple cohort charts, including your retention rate, churn rate, customer lifetime value, and so on. Hello data people, my name is Robert and I'm here to help you understand and analyze data to make better decisions in e-commerce. So let's get started by you downloading this template. Just click on the first link in the description. Once you follow the links, you will end up on this Google Sheet and here just make a copy of this by clicking here on file. Sorry, mine is in Dutch, but anyway, this is file. And then from here you can see copy, uh, make a copy. And now you'll be able to edit this doc and add your own data into it. So let me show you how to enter your data in this uh, spreadsheet. So just grab your data and make sure it's in this order. You have the customer ID or email. I would use either one, but probably email in your case. Then the order ID, purchase date of that order and the amount. So all, that's all you need. Now, in terms of time frame, this sheet works best when you have 12 months or less, but you can also expand it. I'll show you in a second how. So here I have them already ordered so I can grab all this information, all this data and copy it and just paste it in here. Now, if there's any data, just remove it like this and then let's paste it in. Now, there was about 20,000 rows, so it might take a bit of time. You see it's loading. So let it think about it for a while. Uh, and it'll do all the calculations. So it took like a minute or something to load everything. So let's go to the dashboard tab. And here you can see, oh wait, if you see something like this, just scroll down and make sure if there's a error like this, that there's nothing in the way. So, so this is all automatic. So for example, if your data has more than 12 months, then it will say something like this. For example, here I have this total. If I remove it, it'll start work. In some cases, if you have more than uh, 12 months, then you can just expand this. You just take more rows and then it will expand itself. Same thing for these other ones. I designed this for 12 months, but if you want to look at longer periods, that's also okay, but you just need to expand the space here. Otherwise, you will complain that there's no space. So let's go back to where we were. So from the top, we have the total revenue. Then we have the orders and customers. It pulls that from your data. And then we have the orders by customers. And that's just uh, this divided by this. AOV, average order value, is just this revenue divided by orders. And we get this one, uh, $481. And then the lifespan per customer. This is a bit harder because we need to use retention rate. You can see here that I, I've added a bit of a formulas here. You can see that we need the average retention rate and retention rate is calculated here. You can see that it's 21% for this shop. And just so you know, average retention rate is the opposite of average churn rate. So if you're more familiar with the churn, then this is kind of, they're just opposite of each other. So we'll come back to these cohorts in a second. And then we're able to calculate the customer lifetime value by multiplying these three values. And we have about two and a half thousand in customer lifetime value. Now, next one is the marketing expenses. So you would need to fill this in, but basically you just need to add all your total cost of sales and marketing to acquire a new customer. And then we're going to divide that by uh, all number of customers and we get this custom, uh, customer acquisition cost. So, so CAC. And then if you fill in also your gross margin, so gross margin, here's the calculation. It's revenue minus cost of goods sold divided by revenue. For example, if you sell something for $100 and it costs you to manufacture that $40, then you have 60% gross margin. Just fill these two here because it's going to influence some of the data below. All right, so let's continue here. Okay, then we have the orders by cohort here, yeah? And how do you read these charts? Because it's a bit confusing. You need to remember that cohort is just a group of people. Uh, it's, it doesn't mean anything else. It's just a fancy word for groups. And this group is just divided by date. In this case, it's a month. And first month is just January, February, March, April, and so on. So let me summarize everything. When you look at this graph vertically, you're looking at the different cohorts and the number of people who first time bought from us in that cohort. So the one represents January and the 12 is December in this case. 
When you look at the graph horizontally, you're looking at the purchase of that specific cohort. In this case, it's the first purchase month. And you can see how people from that cohort bought again after month one, two, three, and so on. It doesn't mean they bought every month, but a portion of the people from that cohort bought something again. And then if you look at diagonally up, you can see how many customers bought in specific month. Not just for first time buyers, but in total, how many people bought from us in this month. So if you bought your first purchase in January, you're part of this group. And then all of these uh, other numbers. So this is obviously everybody who bought on the first month. And then these people already bought something here, but they also bought on in the month first. So February, they also bought, maybe bought something in March and so on. But it doesn't mean that everybody out of these bought always on first month, second, third, and so on. It might be that, let's say, half of these people bought only in here in month four. But does this mean that you only had, let's say, we're looking at, uh, this is what, January, March. So in March, did you only have 642 orders? No, because you also need to take into account the other months. So in this case, you need to go diagonally up like this, and then you get the total number of uh, orders for that month because look this is march yeah these are people who bought first time in march but we also have orders here so this is january february march and then we have this cohort started in february so then they have february and march so this is why you calculate them like this but cohorts are not useful to look at the data in, in, in this way but they're the most useful if you look at across or if you look down like this, you can see trends by this and you see soon why. If we go down, it just means you're in different cohorts. So that means, this means that this cohort, the people that are in the, part of this cohort, March cohort, they ordered something in March. Here, 9th is September. And this means th uh, this many people ordered something in September, first time from us. But you can see that why is there, why doesn't it continue till the end? Well, the thing is, if we look here up, this is how many months they've been our customers. So it's just a representation of it. So if you if we start with September cohort, that means they bought something in September, then here, October, November, and then you have December, and then the year ends, and my data ends at that point. This would be in the future. So that's why you don't see any data here. And this is how cohorts usually, well, that's how you display them anyway. And by the way, I cover retention rate and other crucial e-commerce metrics more in depth as part of my data for e-commerce courses. For more information, the link will be in the description. Now, the cool thing is when you look at percentages here, you can start doing something like customer retention by cohort. So we can already see here that, hey, the first cohort kind of performed well, especially here. What, what happened in month 10, first cohort, month 10, they had a huge spike or two, like, 93% of these people bought something that might be there's an issue with the data or it might be that there was a huge discount or something and everybody just rushed to buy. But this looks a bit too good to be true. Same thing here. We can notice like there have been few cohorts where we didn't perform that well. Is that because our marketing campaigns were not that good or do we just have seasonal product and this is kind of normal that People are not so interested in winter equipment during uh, summer, for example. So you can start seeing trends like this. You, if you want to have overall trend for your retention, this is a good one here. And you can see that for this shop specifically, it drops a lot. So about uh, only a quarter of people stay. You can retain them after first month. But after that, you can see that there's barely any drop off if you continue throughout the time. And this is good. I mean, if you're able to retain the customers that stay, this is, this is amazing if you can, can keep them this well. That's why there's this average retention rate of 21%. If you need to use it for any calculation, you can, you can just grab this number. Then we have the retention curve, basically shows same as here, but just in different way. And then customer revenue by cohort. And you can see that, okay, again, the first cohort, Something weird because it, it made a lot of money then, but the rest look about similar. So we had a dip here during summer, but then it picked up again a little bit here during the um, second part of the year. And I think the most interesting part 
is when we scroll down here is these two cohorts you have the customer lifetime revenue by cohort so this is how much revenue you expect to make from each of your customers so at the beginning the cohort one this is how much revenue they generate for you per customer remember this is per customer the next month they will have this much generated the, and then the next and so on so by month 11 you can see that it's already six thousand six hundred dollars in revenue now does this mean it happens every time and uh, no but you can see here if we don't take into account these two first cohorts it's around three four thousand uh if you look at about eight nine months so that's quite doable i think for most of the months i think the other two were just um, a bit of outliers and since we know that how much customer lifetime revenue we, we can generate from each customer we can now look at a customer lifetime profit by cohort so now we are taking we're uh, re, we're taking these numbers into account we're taking into account the gross margin and also the cac the the customer acquisition cost so we're taking those two into account and what does this reveal to us well it means we are actually making a loss first month so when we acquire the person second month we're still making a loss but then around second third or actually here third or fourth if you will look at uh, all the cohorts that's where we're starting to make profit so this is uh, we're making a loss and as soon as it turns on the plus side you can see that we have now profit and we're expecting to make a profit of about a thousand or maybe even fifteen hundred by month nine which just means that we can spend more on marketing if we know these type of numbers. Okay, now you know how to calculate retention rate, but I noticed at my agency that I use three metrics that have had even bigger impact on my day-to-day -day work in e-commerce. So check out this deep dive where I'll show you what they are and how you can use them to boost your revenue today.